people hear the word unity and run. They think, oh my gosh, they, this is a cult. They just want everyone to sit around in a circle and hold hands and sing Kumbaya and love thy neighbor and all of our problems will go away. And that is so not it. I'm Sophie Barron. I am the founder and CEO of The Conversationalist. And first and foremost, I am a unifier. I feel like I was put on this earth to bring people together across differences. And I've been on this journey now since 2015. It's been eye-opening. I've learned so many things and I'm just on a mission to break open people's echo chambers so they can come together and have conversations that matter. TC is short for The Conversationalist, and we are a nonpartisan educational platform dedicated to breaking Gen Z outside of their echo chambers so we can unify the world. We've evolved and pivoted so many times since we've started, but right now we are really focused on bringing Gen Z together to have important conversations in two main ways. So first we have our global Gen Z community. It's a network of amazing young people from around the world where we talk about anything and everything that matters to our generation in an app. And people are there all day long chatting about important issues and trying to understand other people's points of view surrounding things that are happening in the world and unfolding around us in real time. So the first part of TC is our community. And the second piece of our brand is our talk show. We are launching the first ever Gen Z talk show called POVs to be a place for, for young people everywhere to feel like their voices can be heard. You know, not only are we a platform, but I like to think of us as a way of life. We're really just trying to help people become the best conversationalists that they can be and adopt this mindset and this mentality that we can coexist. And we want to empower young people to feel like they can have conversations with people and live in the same world as people who have different views than them. And our brand helps to make that possible. My TC journey stems all the way back to my upbringing. I was born and raised in the Midwest. I'm from Wichita, Kansas, of all places. And from a pretty early age, I knew that I was different from a lot of my peers. I could feel something was off. I, no matter how hard I tried to fit in, I was categorized as the other. And I learned pretty early on that I was different because I was the only Jewish kid in my entire grade in school. It was a very isolating realization to, to learn that I was so different from my homogenous community that was for the most part privileged, white, and from Christian or Catholicism as their backgrounds. Growing up, I, I knew I wanted to make a difference in the world, but I didn't quite know how. And every time I would try to step up to the plate and be a leader, I felt turned down. I really felt that in order to be a leader and to have a voice, I needed to be doing all the things and I needed to be given the green light by my teachers and my peers in order to have a voice. And I think my biggest realization that led me to where I am now with TC is that all along I had a voice and the only person standing in my way was myself. The Conversationalist is a place for Gen Zers to break their echo chambers and to have meaningful conversations in order to unify the world. The origin story of TC starts all the way back with Sophie in college. But when I came in kind of on the grounds of the conversationalist, 
it was really started to be the go-to destination for Gen Z. And that really took off in 2020, which is essentially when we launched to the public in the beginning with all of the insane things happening in the world, starting with the pandemic and everyone was at home. Gen Zers had no place to have these conversations productively and had no place to turn to. And so we really ended up being that place for a lot of people. So it was the summer of 2020. I believe it was 2020. 2020, September 2020. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. There's like so many people in here. Little did I know that there really weren't that many people compared to now. You were like, hey, like I am a part of this group called The Conversationalist, you should join it. A bunch of people are on there having these kinds of conversations. I just felt like pure elation. I was like, whoa, this is like dope. Um, so that's kind of how it really began, but we really wanted to do that because there was a lot going on in the world and we needed to have conversations about it to get through everything. And during that time, our world was more divided than ever. And so it was the one place that people could go to really feel unified um, with people who felt differently than them. And so I think that that was really a beautiful thing. I started seeing people who like, did not have the same views as me. And I was like, okay, I don't know how I feel about this. Um, and I would like almost debate people. Um, you were one of them. <laughs> My hottest take is that I'm, I think being like a freedom extremist is great because you can't, because ensuring the freedoms that you even don't agree with, you're protecting your own freedoms. I always will be like passionate about voting rights and raising like the political efficacy in America. Most of our problems would be solved if we had a mother and a father in a home raising children on biblical foundations. The things that we write and put out there should be like completely like unrestricted and people should be able to write what they want to say. And if there's consequences, there's consequences. But I don't think that any like corporation or government should restrict that. If we have a healthy economy, typically um, we will have along with that a healthy culture and social society. The drinking age should actually be higher. Oh, I got a, okay, this is a hot take. I hope that people agree with me. Even when I am not out partying, I love me some McDonald's. Like when I am just normal and a lot of people are like, oh, McDonald's is only a party food or only if I have yeah. to get it. No, I will go out of my way to get me some McDonald's. There's something about their breakfast. Like the bacon, egg, cheese, biscuit, hash brown, their coffee. I will, before I work out and sometimes even after I work out, save money it tastes good it's consistent i love me some mcdonald's and i'm a mcdonald's fan i learned so much from her she's been an incredible mentor an incredible boss an incredible co-worker and role model she's and friend she's really all of the things and she just has such a passion for making the world a better place and she won't stop ever. <laughs> and so I am just so excited to be on this journey with her. Something that The Conversationalist is working on right now is our television show called POVs, which stands for point of view with a Z at the end you know, signifying Gen Z points of views. And we're so excited about it because it's essentially a direct manifestation of what's happening in our community, but on a larger scale, on a professional custom POV set in our studio in New York, um, where young people are having these super controversial, tough conversations hosted by our CEO and founder, Sophie Barron. And so it is so insane, so exciting and it's really a tool to educate young people on how to have these conversations and everyone, educate everyone on how to have these conversations. So we're so excited to bring this to a larger scale 
and to you know hopefully impact as many people as possible through our show um and with that we're also doing one-on-one celebrity interviews with a ton of celebrities that you know everyone has probably heard of um and really getting their unique perspective on the world where Sophie sits down with them and really has an intimate one-on-one conversation and where they really open up about their life and what has made them who they are today and what has helped form their own opinions and perspectives on the world, which is so fascinating and so fascinating, especially since they're celebrities, you know, who don't necessarily open up about certain things on their platforms or on other interviews. Um, So we're so excited to have those components of the show and Sophie has been going all over the country um, interviewing real college students and young people on the streets and getting their perspectives on such a wide range of different topics and questions. And so those have been all of our social media accounts and um, is something that we're doing as well as we gear up for the show. So we're so excited for that. So definitely follow The Conversationalist on Instagram and TikTok and join our community. All you have to do is click the link in our bio or go to our website at www.theconversationalist.com to stay up to date with everything that's going on and get involved with us in the future because there's a lot of opportunities coming up. I get a lot of hate nowadays because what I thought was a universal concept is actually something that a lot of people disagree on. There are so many people in our world who do not think that dialogue is the answer. And I think that's been a hard thing to reconcile with, but it's also been the best thing to reconcile with because brands and people can't be everything to everyone. And I think it's helped me really find my lane with the conversationalist. Outside voices can have an opinion on what we're doing and everyone and their mom has an opinion on what I'm doing, but they don't know what DC is about. They haven't felt the magic of a moment where you actually have seen eye to eye. Whether it's at at TC, whether it's in your community, whether it's at SCAD, like it's all about finding places in which you can have these conversations yourselves. We just wanna help empower people to be that person, someone who can coexist, someone who can unify. And I think right now, if I believe that if everyone had a little slice of TC in their lives, they would just become a better citizen of the world. Our agenda at the end of the day is just to give people everything that they need to break open their personal echo chamber and whatever that means for them, and to give them the tools and the resources to have these hard conversations. People post all the time, TC is a leftist organization. TC is a conservative organization. Like everyone's trying to assign labels to us and people can believe whatever they want, but that's not what we're about. It's actually the opposite. You know, we want to be a place for every label. Like we, we just want to be the convener, like the UN of Gen Z, you know, like how can we actually bring people together to have conversations in a way that doesn't push any agenda on our end but people can push their own agendas in the community. We can't have a say over that, but we're doing everything in our power to remain completely nonpartisan in everything we do. I think at the end of the day, the beauty of unity is the ability to share some common vision for the future. I think for the most part, Again, I could be generalizing, but I think for the most part, human beings want to live happy, successful lives. We all want to leave the world a little bit of a better place than when we found it. And we want to give to our future children and grandchildren a better world. And I think there are some people out there that genuinely do not share that goal and do not want to make the world a better place and have no interest in wanting to find a way to coexist. And I think those people are never going to change and that's okay. We can't expect people to change. But I will say that since we are the most diverse generation to date, we no longer hope 
for diversity, equity, and inclusion, we expect it. You know, we we are going out and seizing life and grabbing life and trying to create that future we so hope to live in. And I think our generation is so uniquely suited to bring the world back together. Will we do it? Only time will tell. But I think everything we're doing now is planting seeds. Every conversation we have is a seed. Every moment in which we're willing to listen to someone who's different than us is a seed. And we're not going to see that tree grow until we're grandparents, you know? Like it's going to take years to cultivate that garden and that forest. But what we can do now is do everything in our power to plant those seeds and do everything we can to cultivate that garden to help it to grow. Our duty as a platform is to get people to talk because no one is talking. And in order to get people to talk, you've got to allow people to feel completely safe and allowed to share whatever is on their minds. And it becomes tricky when there are certain people who feel that their beliefs are their way or the highway. And sometimes those beliefs can infringe upon a person's identity. And so when it comes to issues of race, gender, sexuality, there are people out there that don't believe that people are allowed to exist in the way that they are because of their religion, their upbringing, whatever their motivation is. They believe that people can't get married of the same sex. They believe that transgender individuals should not be, you know, allowed to be themselves. There are people out there that believe that there are races and religions that are superior to others. But this is where TC differentiates from anything out there in the world. We believe that in order to unify and actually bring people to the salad bowl, we all have to agree that every single person, every ingredient has the right to be there and is allowed to retain their original shape and can be their original shape. You know, there are so many different types of tomatoes. There are so many different types of apples. We have to allow those apples to be the Granny Smiths and the Macintoshes instead of saying you all have to be a red apple. You know, red apples aren't that good. I, I never buy them in the grocery store. But in order to actually build a better whole, we have to acknowledge that every person has a right to be there. And I think that's where it's tricky because yes, we want everything to be, we want everyone to be able to say whatever the hell they want. Anything goes at TC. And we all have to say things with the intention of listening to other people and the intention of letting other people be who they want to be. And so I think sometimes people don't have that same energy that goes both ways and it's really troubling to me, but that's where we have to step in because we know it works. We know that if we can all respect one another to the point where you can believe what you want to believe and I can believe what I want to believe and we can both exist in the world, that's where we create unity. But if someone comes in and believes that, you know, I am not allowed to be who I am because I'm a Jewish woman and people think that Jews run the world and all these horrible stereotypes, that person is never going to fully unify with me because they can't see me for who I am. And I think that's where we have to build from the ground up. Our generation has so much potential if we can honor the diversity that we have and acknowledge that diversity is a good thing and that we all will make the world a better place by being our truest selves. And there are people out there that think diversity is a bad thing. And that's unfortunately going to be impeding our ability to unify. So anyways, I could talk about this for hours, but yes, anything goes under our umbrella of guidelines that everyone upholds so that we can actually come to the salad bowl. If you are coming to our community and wanting to actually get your view across to people, you're never going to be able to get through to other people if you can't respect them. If you can create that mutual respect, then we've actually built a bridge. But the bridge collapses when you can't even respect the person on the other side. And in order to build that bridge, you have to respect other people. Otherwise, you are never going to get your view across. And it's actually to help you and your own agenda, whatever that may be. But some people feel like it's it's directly prohibiting them from being their fullest selves when really it's just about having the same energy for another person. You have the right to believe exactly what you want to believe and that person can come as they are. And those things have to exist in order to keep that bridge intact. Unity to me is a salad 
not a soup. And to me, this means that when you think of a soup, let's say we're making a gorgeous soup with a bunch of different ingredients. You put them all into a blender, and by the end, when you're enjoying the soup, you can't even recognize the individual parts. You may get an essence here or there, but it's it, it's a it's a dish where everything blends together in a way that you know could be argued as a better whole, but nothing retains its original shape. And it's almost like forced together. But when you think of a salad, you take all of these amazing ingredients and you put them into the same bowl, but they don't really change their shape unless you're like chopping up a vegetable. It's still a carrot, it's still a pepper, you know, it's it's a it, it's a process in which you bring very disparate seeming parts together that constitute a greater whole. But at the end of it, the salad is comprised of very individual components that retain their original shape. And I think that is what unity means to me. It's being able to bring people to the table, the same salad bowl, if you will, and just getting people there where they don't have to change their minds. They don't have to agree. At the end of the day, if they just wanna stay in their own little compartment and not become a part of the salad, that's on them. But I would argue that eating the salad is healthier than the soup. You know, finding a way to, to come closer together with different people who have completely different shapes and sizes and backgrounds and beliefs and opinions and perspectives and perceptions as you, there's something so valuable in that. You know, you would have never known that it could have been a greater whole had you not come to the salad bowl. And so to me, unifying and unity means coming closer together with someone or some belief or opinion or experience outside of your own that you would have never experienced before. And we can come to the same table and learn how to coexist within that salad bowl. So to me, that is what unifying is. It's the ability to find our shared humanity and find a way to coexist. Thank you so much for, for interviewing me.